Because in everything we do, we will be guided by the highest journalistic standards written into the contracts of everybody who works here at GB News. Robust, even disputatious debate, of course. A much wider variety of voices than you currently hear in broadcasting, certainly. But never the promotion of matters we know to be untrue or the pushing of facts that are convenient to a viewpoint that may be convenient, but not properly checked. And when we do make mistakes, as we will, we will correct them quickly and without quibble. Along the way, we hope to have fun. We hope you will too. GB News will aim to inform, inspire, and entertain. We start the journey tonight. We hope you'll join us, because if it matters to you, it matters to us. I'm Andrew Neal, and this is GB News. I don't know. I, I mean, obviously, he's talking about the UK, but could not everything he said there apply to us here in Canada and to the United States? and to Australia, and to New Zealand, and to the West in general. I think it could. And I came across this guy in a gorgeous Scottish accent, just sending it. And I thought, who is this guy? I mean, uh, you, you've got it there? Let's play just a minute of it. This is the first time I ever encountered Andrew Neal. Hello, welcome to this week. A week in which a bunch of loser jihadists slaughtered 132 innocents in Paris to prove the future belongs to them, rather than a civilization like France. Well, I can't say I fancy their chances. France, the country of Descartes, Boulet, Monet, Sartre, Rousseau, Camus, Renoir, Berlioz, Cézanne, Gauguin, Hugo, Voltaire, Matisse, Debussy, Ravel, Sanson, Bizet, Satie, Pasteur, Molière, Frank, Zola, Balzac, Poulenc, cutting edge science, world class medicine, fearsome security forces, nuclear power, Coco Chanel, Chateau Lafitte, Coco Van, Daft Punk, Zizou Zidane, Juliette Binoche, Liberty, Egality, Fraternity, and Creme Brulee. Versus what? Beheadings, crucifixions, amputations, slavery, mass murder, medieval squalor, a death cult barbarity that would shame the Middle Ages. Well, IS or Dash or ISIS or ISIL or whatever name you're going by, I'm sticking with IS, as in Islamist scumbags. I think the outcome is pretty clear to everybody but you. Whatever atrocities you're currently capable of committing, you will lose. In a thousand years' time, Paris, that glorious city of lights, will still be shining bright, as will every other city like it, while you will be as dust, along with a ragbag of fascist Nazis and Stalinists that have previously dared to challenge democracy and failed. Huh. I saw that, and I thought, who is this guy? And he's got such a style to him. That guy's name is Andrew Neal. And I was hooked immediately. I thought he, he knows a lot. So he's, I, uh, he's got the intelligence and the sophistication and the intellectual horsepower of, of anyone, but he's got a plain spokenness of few people. And, and I think that he was always, um, not quite in place in, in, on channels like the BBC. And so he retired recently, and I thought, come on, are you retiring? You got so many more rounds left in you. Um, and, and he's affiliated with The Spectator magazine. And I, I saw him on Twitter because he would, he would punch a bit on Twitter, but I thought, my God, you were being underutilized. Like, I really think, and I, I mean, that was just, the, I just wanted to show you the first time I encountered him. Because so many in the West were all mew, 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 and there's Andrew Neal just sending it. And anyway, he, I, I followed a lot of his interviews. Oh, my God, his interview on Jeremy Corbyn on the anti-Semitism in that party was like watching a lawyer in a cross-examination. You know what? Can you dig up one more thing? Andrew Neal, Boris Johnson. Holy moly. That's the thing about Andrew Neal. I'd call him centrist, maybe a, maybe a 1% to the right. But the main thing to know about him is that he's a great interviewer and he does his research again so well like a lawyer in a cross-examination so he just absolutely 
shredded Jeremy Corbyn. In fact, once, once he got the Boris Johnson thing, I'd love to show a bit of that Corbyn thing. Doing that could cost lives. Well, as I say, I, I reject entirely the assertion that anything I said made things worse. And indeed, I think that any attempt by others to point the finger of blame at the UK government, Nobody at the is UK foreign... That. Well, you are, if I may see your... Uh, I'm not doing that. I'm trying to work just... out if you made it worse. There's a volatile You're... situation in the Gulf at the moment. Correct. It is a dangerous place. Our Correct. ships are under attack. The Royal Navy has had to be mobilized. That's absolutely right. We are all, the more reason to be firm, all the more reason to be firm with Iran and not, and not to inculpate ourselves and, to, and, 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 as, and as it were, to assume the, blame the problem for situations this, as Prime where, Minister, where the Iranians are themselves... No one's doing it. You go fault. off again at a tangent to avoid answering the so question. So what's the, the issue is the thrust of your... Loose your, I don't understand lips, the thrust of your interrogation. Loose then. lips cost ships. Well, I think... When and it, you have loose lips, Mr. Johnson. When it comes to uh, what's happening, in, to answer, you know, if you're, if you're asking a serious question about what's happening in the Persian Gulf... All right, it's a long interview. There was just one moment where Boris Johnson says, what about section 6.8.2 or something? And Andrew Neil says, yeah, but what about 6.8.3? I'm making up a number there. And Boris Johnson didn't he actually, it was just gorgeous, gorgeous. But you can see he's tough with Boris Johnson, the, the nominal conservative. So you have the clip of him with um, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, because that was like going to a butcher shop. And I just want to show you that he's tough on politicians on any side. And... He's so engaged and so prepared. He must spend days uh, briefing himself in advance. Do we have a, just a clip of that, Jeremy Corden? We will protect the cemeteries also. We, we will not allow anti-Semitism in any form in our society because it is poisonous and divisive just as much as Islamophobia or far-right racism is. And I think we can agree on that. Except and that they, they don't trust you. They don't well, think your heart's in it. When you say, seen, they've, when seen, you say, they've seen you share platforms with Andrew, some of when the you world's say they, vilest anti semites When you say there, who do you mean? Uh, many Jews. 80% of Jews think that you're anti-Semitic. That's quite a lot of British Jews. I mean, wouldn't you like to take this opportunity tonight to apologize to the British Jewish community for what's happened? What I'll say to, is this. I am determined that our society will be safe for people of all faiths. I don't want anyone to be feeling insecure in our society. And our government will protect every community so against, no the, apology. Oh, against the abuse they receive on the streets, on the trains, or in any, so other, no apology for in how any you other form of life. And, try one more time. No, no hang apology. on a minute, Andrew. Can I explain what we're trying to do? You have, and you've been given plenty of time to do it. I asked you if you wanted to apologize. And Andrew, and you I haven't. don't want anyone to go through what anyone has gone through. Anyways, the guy is a tiger, and um, you, can, you can understand why, uh, and credit to both Corbyn and Johnson to sitting down with him, but other cabinet ministers are so terrified. Anyways, so this absolute bulldozer of a journalist who is scrupulously nonpartisan. Um, he's super smart, but he's got a plain touch. I mean, how, I think he's the best journalist in the English language. I'm a bit of a fan. So he, he retired, and I thought, what are you doing? You got 10 years left, and you maybe 20. Uh, like, why are you, as soon as he was on Twitter, I thought, gee, that's the waste. And he, he would do a few YouTube things, and, and I thought, my God. And then I heard that he was being tasked with leading an entirely new news network. And I'm talking big, not just a small thing, like an around the clock shows every day, like even bigger than what Sun News Network was in Canada. And they put together a great group of people, many backgrounds, a real focus on the regions in the UK, not just the metropolitan fancies in the city. And last night they debuted, and I have no stake in this other than I'm a super fan. And I downloaded the app for free, and you can watch it for free. And I, there's this opening introduction by Andrew Neil that is so great. And yes, it's for British audiences, and it's called GB News, Great Britain News. So you're probably saying, okay, Ezra, enough. You're an Anglophile, whatever. Shut up. We heard you. No, no, no. I want you to hear this from Andrew Neil and realize how applicable this is to Canada, Australia, New Zealand, United States, 
any media anywhere. I'm jealous that they have this in the UK. In many ways, this is even more vigorous than Fox News in America. Take a look. It's 8 p.m. on Sunday, June the 13th, 2021. Welcome to the launch of GB News, Britain's news channel dedicated to covering the news that matters to you and to giving a voice to those who felt sidelined or even silenced in our great national debates. Because if it matters to you, it matters to us. GB News will not slavishly follow the existing news agenda. We're not a rolling news channel, nor will we be providing conventional news bulletins. But on all of our programs and platforms, you'll always know what's going on and what the country is talking about. We will broadcast news programs throughout the day that are appointments to view, built around passionate presenters with character, flair, attitude, opinion, and yes, a sense of humor. They will concentrate on the stories that matter to you and that others are neglecting. And even when we're covering the same stories as others, we'll come at them in a very different way. We put together a lineup of youth and experience, of familiar faces and fresh ones. They come from all backgrounds and all parts of our country too. Our team of national and regional reporters covering the whole of the UK is the backbone of GB News, embedded in communities they know because that's where they hail from delivering the huge range of stories and voices that reflect the views and values of our United Kingdom. What unites us is the firm belief that now is the time to do news differently. We are committed to covering the people's agenda, not the media's agenda. We will not lecture you or talk down, and nobody will be allowed to Hector. Indeed, Hector has been banished from the studio. GB News will not be yet another echo chamber for the metropolitan mindset that already dominates so much of our media. It is our explicit aim to empower those who feel their stories, their opinions, their concerns have been ignored or diminished. We are proud to be British. The clue is in the name. And while we will never hold back from covering our country's many flaws and problems, we will not come at every story with the conviction that Britain is always at fault, usually to blame when things go wrong, generally useless. We won't forget what the B stands for in our title. We will cover the good news as well as the bad, because even in grim times there is much that is great and uplifting to report and celebrate about our country. We will encourage debate and conversation to include voices you don't often hear on other news broadcasts. We'll sometimes court controversy, but we want civilized discourse, not shouting matches, no matter how heated our discussions become. And we like heated discussions, but we will always demand respect for opposing points of view. We won't dwell much on the latest gossip of the Westminster bubble, which is too often obsessed about matters of no importance to anybody else. We will puncture the pomposity of our elites in politics, business, media, and academia, and expose their growing promotion of cancel culture for the threat to free speech and democracy that it is. We'll be more concerned with what will raise prosperity and create jobs in our left-behind towns than what some overprivileged and ahistoric students decide to hang on their walls in Oxford. Social mobility and a fair chance in life for all will matter more to us than the wasteland to nowhere that is identity politics. And if you want fake news, lies, disinformation, distortion of the facts, conspiracy theories, then GB News is not for you. Because in everything we do, we will be guided by the highest journalistic standards written into the contracts of everybody who works here at GB News. Robust, even disputatious debate, of course. A much wider variety of voices than you currently hear in broadcasting, certainly. But never the promotion of matters we know to be untrue or the pushing of facts that are convenient to a viewpoint that may be convenient but not properly checked. And when we do make mistakes, as we will, we will correct them quickly and without quibble. Along the way, we hope to have fun. We hope you will too. GB News will aim to inform, inspire, and entertain. We start the journey tonight. We hope you'll join us, because if it matters to you, it matters to us. I'm Andrew Neal, and this 
is GB News. I don't know. I, I mean, obviously, he's talking about the UK, but could not everything he said there apply to us here in Canada and to the United States and to Australia and to New Zealand and to the West in general? I think it could. And maybe, I mean, listen, you can tell I'm a super fan of his. But maybe mainly it's just I saw this talent and then all, I don't know where the dough came from. I don't know who the investors are. I, I, it was published somewhere, but I'm actually not even that interested because they created this amazing thing and they just launched last night. Oh, and there's one more detail. In its first night, it was the top rated news channel in the United Kingdom. I, now, maybe it's just the excitement, but still, in your debut night, you beat the BBC News Channel and Sky News on your first time out. Pretty impressive to me. Last point, I watched about an hour of it yesterday on my app. The most, perhaps the most stunning thing were the ads. They had premium blue chip ads and a lot of them, maybe it was just on the app, but so what? Uh, I mean, from even woke companies like... uh, Amazon, for example, had an ad on them. I mean, that's a pretty woke left-wing company. Uh, So they're attracting mainstream ads. And it's funny because on Twitter, all the lefties in the UK were saying, I'm going to boycott whatever advertisers are on there. They were saying that before the channel even launched, by the way, which shows how close-minded they were. But my point is, good luck with that. They have some of the leading blue chip, you know, top 50 companies in the UK advertising there. If you go to rebelnews.com, a pop-up says, help, you know, don't get censored. Give us your email or your mobile number. It takes one second to put it in. And in our six years, we have never sold or given away our viewers info. This is what you see. So if you go to the website, this pops up, don't get censored. I don't know if that's grammatical, but there it is. Big tech is coming. Big big tech is censoring us. Sign up so we can always stay in touch. Email or mobile phone. That takes two seconds to fill up. Because if they kill us on Tuesday, how are we going to tell you where we are? How are we going to tell you about where the videos are? 